Hey everyone, my name is Brandon, and uh, I love talking about video games, hence TYT Gaming. Yes, it is Tuesday, February the 26th, and I will be talking about the PS4. Yes, I know, I'm one week late. Deal with it. So if you haven't heard, the next generation of the PlayStation is confirmed for holiday 2013. Now, going to the conference, Nintendo's Wii U has had, uh, I'll say, uninspiring sales. Microsoft is set to reveal their console a little later, so the momentum is clearly on Sony's side here. They have a chance to take this. How did Sony do? The very first thing I want to examine is optics. The day after the presentation, I took a bunch of pictures of the major media outlets covering the PS4. Remember, this conference, yeah, it's for gamers, but there is a huge media component here. So having said that, what is the one unifying image of the PS4? Let's take a look here at CBS. It's the controller and the architect of the PS4. Uh, CNN, the controller. Entertainment Weekly, controller. Fox News, controller. NBC, controller. Telegraph UK, controller. Toronto Star, my local newspaper, controller. And I believe the USA Today is the most circulated paper in the United States. I could be wrong. Someone correct me on that if I'm wrong. Uh, their image, the logo. It turns out the one unifying image of the PS4 was not actually the PS4. It was the controller. Sony never showed off the console. They showed off a controller, which I don't personally believe is a system seller. You have to remember, we have tablets, we have phones that do so much more with touchscreens than the PS4 controller. Now, as a hardcore gamer, and I assume if you're watching this video, you are a hardcore gamer, because uh, you're actually seeking out this video a week late, the way a console looks doesn't really appeal to you or me. It doesn't really matter, actually. But when's the next time Sony's going to have unchallenged media coverage? When does anyone ever have unchallenged media coverage? There is no competition here. This was an opportunity to crush Microsoft, and let me show you why. I'm going to take an example of one of the highest grossing movies ever, coincidentally, a Sony movie. Here's a logo for 007 Skyfall. Let's say the headline under it says, Coming soon, holiday 2012. Will that image stick in your head compared to this poster? 007, action shot, gun drawn, looks cool. You kind of get an idea what the movie's about. The image of James Bond having the gun, that's going to stick with you and stay with you. Not just some vague logo. And put it this way, once the console is shown, no major media outlet will run with the controller as the lead image. That's how insignificant the controller really is. My problem is that Sony could have done something major and crushed Microsoft in the media battle by showing the console and raising public awareness about the PS4. It's not necessarily about you or I. We're going to be convinced by, you know, games. We're hardcore gamers. It's about the average person who might buy the console later on. All the major media outlets gave Sony an opportunity and they chose not to take it. Now, I can see it right now. People are going to be on their computers going, Hurrah, Brandon, they're going to wait for E3 to show up the console. You don't understand. The problem is, I do understand. I understand that Sony's going to be competing against Nintendo and Microsoft for media coverage. So I think Sony did a bad job here with media optics. I think they could have done a better job, a much better job, actually. But let's move on to games, because that's the most important thing. I think for launch, and hear me out, if you're paying $400 to $500 for a console, you want franchises you're familiar with. Now, I know we all talk about new IPs and how much we are tired of rehashes, but a console at launch is an expensive investment. People want something they're familiar with rather than gamble on a new console with unfamiliar IPs. Halo launching with the original Xbox is an exception to that rule, uh, but I think Killzone aiming for launch is a great move. Infamous, I don't believe it's a target yet, but that's a good idea too. If you don't like Infamous or you don't like Killzone, you have to remember, those franchises have sold millions of copies, and the promise that these franchises will continue onto the PS4 means people are likely to upgrade to play the next iteration of that game. If you go back to my early Wii U videos, I always made the point that the company has to convince me to upgrade. I already own a Wii, they have to give me a reason to upgrade to a Wii U. Sony has the same issue with the PS3 and PS4, obviously, but I think launching a console with that high a price tag has to appeal to hardcores. And Sony isn't looking to bring new gamers along for the holiday. They want the people who already bought a PS3 to buy it at this high a price. This is supposed to create an install base over Microsoft. So about games, I think Sony passed here. By bringing in Killzone and Infamous along for PS4, that's a great move. That's going to convince people to actually go forward and buy a PS4. And a quick note about backwards compatibility, because, I don't know, I just thought about this. I'm a little bit cynical when Gaikai says they want to put PlayStation games up for download. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a limited library. It'll be years before that list is even fleshed out. They need to get permission, certification, and etc. Gaikai, at the moment, uh, it offers nothing to original adopters, unfortunately. It's like, people are buying it at launch, they're not really buying it for Gaikai. They're buying it for that Killzone or Infamous or things like that. 
Now on to hardware, and this is an interesting issue. Let's call this what it is. The GPU and CPU are weak. Absolutely no way around that. What makes the PS4 special is the GDDR5 8 gigs of RAM. Developers are raving about this. The RAM on the PS4 future proofs it 8 years, 10 years down the future, and it puts Microsoft in a little bit awkward spot here. No, the PS4 will not kill PC gaming, that's impossible, nor will the 720 for that matter. PC gaming will always be king, but first party developers will use that 8 gigs of RAM for PS4 capabilities. Third party games might run a little bit better on PS4, but it won't be a huge difference between the 720 and PS4. You should probably look towards the PS2 generation and see how developers are well tailored towards the, you know, the bigger install base and the lower spec. One final note I've seen mentioned a few times, maybe people are getting excited about it, I, I can't quite tell, is the whole share button thing. Or apparently being able to drop into games and give hints. Now, okay, I know I'm going to be cynical. I'm the, I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. It's okay, but it's not amazing. The idea that, like Demon Souls, you can check in to what your friend's doing and drop some hints, that won't be used by third-party developers at all. I think it's a gimmick. Sorry, it's not going to convince me to buy the console. So as a recap before we finish off the video, I think Sony had a pretty good conference. PS4 will probably have a pretty strong launch, but we have to see what Microsoft has to offer. I think the hardware is pretty mediocre outside the RAM. Services like Gaikai, the share button, and things like that, those don't really convince me. I personally think they missed a huge mark when it came to the media, but I think they can rebound that one. But the strongest point, once again, is games. They came out with a Killzone, they came out with an Infamous. That's going to convince hardcore gamers to buy that console at launch if they enjoy those franchises. And we have a lot more to go. It's all about upgrading. And for a console that's going to be this expensive, you need to convince people who already bought the console originally, the PS3, to upgrade. Wow, that was a lot. Throw your comment below. What are your thoughts on the PS4? It's interesting. I think for a two-hour conference, everyone took a little bit out of it that maybe I didn't, maybe you didn't, but someone found something interesting. And here's a better question. Did Sony do a better job debuting the PS4 than Nintendo did the Wii U? It's an interesting question. I look forward to the answers. Thank you all for watching. You know this, I, I know I always say this, but it really doesn't mean a lot to me that people actually care about what I have to say. I'm going to take a long nap now because I've been doing a lot of schoolwork. Uh, love you guys. Later.